Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Magandang araw sa mga kapatid na nakikibahagi sa ating uh, pagsamba dito sa Shrine of Jesus Divine Word through this live streaming. Last uh, Sunday, we were presented with a, an image, a sober image, if not terrifying image, of the desert where Jesus was tempted by the devil. Desert has become almost synonymous to the image of synonymous of the image of Lent and what it stands for. In fact, it was these forty days of Jesus in the desert that became a kind of a model, idea that would inspire the church as it instituted this so-called quadragesima, quaresma in uh, Spanish, or Lent, 40 days of preparation for Easter. It was because of these, well, part of it, the idea taken from the experience of Jesus of the desert. And Lent, seen as a desert experience and journey, implied aridity, struggle against the enemy, discipline, penance, sacrifice, images and practices, ideas that are not exactly very pleasing nor consoling for our taste. The readings today, however, provide a beautiful contrast to that of the image of the desert. It provides a, an image full of hope, positive and encouraging to say the least. The readings today beautifully complement its other or reinforce its other. The prophet Isaiah in the first reading using the image of the rain and the snow that provide irrigation for the earth and makes it uh, fertile and enable plants to bear fruit for human sustenance. Image precisely of God's efficacious word powerful word that accomplishes God's plans and purposes. Here, Isaiah reminds us that in our relationship with God, everything is a gift and everything is asked and awaited from God from above. But the gift of God is such that as soon as it meets the human person, the earth, it arouses an uh, awaits free and active response and reactions of persons of the earth, of the created world. Thus, the efficacy of the action that truly counts in our life, we can say that all these actions depend on the goodness of the gift, the strength of the seed, 
that bears fruit. The power of the word, the thirst of the earth that receives happily that gift, the desire, the docility, obedience of the heart that listens. These are the characteristics of the gift and the one who receives. On these two poles revolve around the plan of salvation that concerns us as individuals and as a community. On the one hand, it uh, impels us continuously to hope based on this unstoppable and indestructible efficacy of God's gift, of God's word. As if that Isaiah is telling us, yes, there is meaning and joy in the life of people, of the world, because there is certainty, there is power in the gift of God, especially His Word. On the other hand, however, it awakens also in us the sense of our limitations that move us to ask God's pardon for all the shortcomings in our way of responding to that gift of God. So two things, the generosity, the certainty of God, God's mercy and love being offered to us. But at the same time, our response, which many times are inadequate. And so we approach God with humility, recognizing our inadequacy. The gospel also reflects the same theology as that of Isaiah in the first reading, that the true faithful believer places his trust, his or her trust, of being heard by the one who directs his thoughts, by the one to whom he directs his thoughts and prayers. It is the first part of the Our Father, which is basically a praise uh, to God for who He is as Father. Concerns for the propagation of the kingdom. Kingdom, His kingdom, that is nothing else but the kingdom of His where the fullness of life, peace, love, reign. On the other hand, the faithful, we should know also that to us that which is necessary to live and re-establish our relationship as children of God no, by asking precisely His forgiveness, His mercy, which is, of course, the greatest gift, the gift that is always new, the gift most coveted, God's mercy and forgiveness. And the second part of the uh, Our Father, which makes us ask for the gift of daily bread, pardon for our sins, it is this, that the efficacy of our prayer is shown that the most significant and the necessary action for one who recognizes, recognizes himself or herself as a child of God and as a sinner. 
So we see here that uh, after all, Lent is a happy and hopeful season, not an arid and wasteland desert, but a hopeful and bountiful experience of God's mercy and love. And this is what we celebrate. This should motivate us even more to trust, to intensify our prayer life because the God to whom we direct our prayer is a God who is generous, merciful, who wants, like in the first reading, make our life fruitful and may his word be our strength in responding to his call to his gift to us gifts of what we have and are gifts from God and we ask the Lord that he may that he may give us also the generosity to respond like a fertile land giving fruit abundant fruit of goodness in praise to his name amen